Just in case you didn't catch our intro, that was In the Loop with the non-professionals. We are live at the basement at Impact 89 <clears throat> FM. So guys, go ahead and tell us your backstory. How did the band start? Well, we started about five years ago now, I think. Oof. Um, just me and Luke in Luke's basement. Um, it was just him and I playing our songs for a while. I would write some songs, and then we would jam them for a while together. We eventually got, through like a family connection, an offer to record our first four songs in Chicago in a studio called Million Yen. So after that, we kind of tried to get serious about it a little bit, and we've been playing ever since. And then a couple years ago, Steve and our guitarist, who's not with us right now, Julian, they both joined in, and yeah, we've just been rocking. Yeah, about one album, an EP, and like a good two singles later, yeah. uh, we're currently recording our second full-length album and releasing a whole bunch of... Just random songs we record in between at our new home studio. We moved from my mom's basement to Christian's dad's basement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Moving up in the world. Oh, yeah. Down, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, you know, kind of, you know, you kind of talked about, you know, getting together, recording a couple songs, getting serious. You know, obviously you are the non-professionals. So I did want to ask, you know, you know, is the, how did the band name come together? Honestly, it came through... I feel like a year of Luke and I deliberating over it. It was a really long, uh, tedious process of us sending names back and forth until we got something that we didn't hate entirely. Yeah, it um, I I think there was like almost a joke of like, oh, there's a band called the Professionals. Well, <laughs> well, the non-professionals and like, like you know, un unprofessionals wasn't quirky enough, so True. had to find the quirkiest way. Fair enough. Steve uh, wasn't there for the decision. I wasn't. <laughs> Do you, do you rock with the name Steve? Or? At this point, I think I have to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Steve doesn't get a choice I in that. <laughs> uh, if you were to make a playlist to describe like the sound of your music, uh, w what would be on that playlist? I feel like with our recent stuff, Ben Folds for sure. I think The Strokes are a decent comparison. Weezer is, I feel like, our biggest comparison band mm -hmm. just in, in our songwriting style. Who else would be on there? Luke, I feel like you got probably a couple well my answer was gonna be ben folds mm. um but i mean the, the cool thing about the band is that christian always uh, came at it from a very poppy sense writing wise at least he, he has very like i'd say poppy songwriting sensibilities uh but the way we take it it, it ends up being just a bit more like punk and loose mm -hmm. um i wouldn't exactly call this a great comparison but like i love early genesis and the fact that you have a bunch of like powerful uh writers in the field of pop but it's getting played a bit more proggy 
and sort of loose. Um, and a lot of our like our songs are very raw in terms of the recording. We don't touch them up a ton or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so so if you, it's like got that nice amount of punk in there. I think a lot of punk fans actually like us, which is a funny <laughs> thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Steve, what would you compare us to? Uh, I mean, me and Julian and well, me and Luke listen to a lot of uh, the Chili Peppers. Like we listen to that on the way here, mm -hmm. actually. But so I think that kind of comes through a little bit between the rhythm mm -hmm. section, just underneath things. Oh, absolutely. Right. No, I was rocking with that bass line on that last track. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first bass line Steve wrote for us, one of the first, pretty early. I th yeah, I think that like was the first, first one. new song we worked on together. Oh, when we, nice. When we first started playing together as a band with the four of us, um, I, I had to listen to the album to like get down some of the bass parts, and I couldn't get them you know, exact, so I would put in a little bit of my own things here and there with Christian's blessings. Mm. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> so it it, it kind of became our own once we came in. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. No, for sure. Well, whenever y'all are ready, you know, we can go ahead and get into that second one. What do you got on deck for us? Our next song is our, m not our most recent single, but it's our second to most recent single. And it's it's like a summer, summer fun rock song. It's called Margo and Cece. It's about looking for love in all the wrong places. I think that's the truth. <laughs> Saying no is hard 
Well, if you're just tuning in, that was Margot and Cece by the Non-Professionals, who are here with us live in the studio on WDBM East Lansing. So I know you mentioned that that was one of your more recent su- singles, um, you know, kind of a, one of your summer bops. Um, I know you've got a more recent single, too, Hiding Sad. So what did the song crafting process look like for these new songs? Both of the songs were pretty different from each other, I think, in how we put them together. Um, for the one thing that keeps them similar is they were both pretty spur of the moment. Um, we've been planning album stuff for years now. I, I think the second album we've been working on since we recorded the first album in like 2018. So these songs came kind of spur of the moment because they felt fun to us. Um, and we just wanted to, you know, keep releasing stuff so people don't forget about us in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Well, I was going to say that it was funny because for a while we were going to record like a different single around the summer, uh, but we had this newer song, Margot and Cece, and we just like played it so much and we liked it so much that we were like, let's stop like trying to make this other song a single. Let's just do this now. Um, it was the last weekend we had in our like old home studio too. So there was a very like, I don't know, there, there was a very kind of like, it was done very quickly. It's true. Um, I forgot about that. And yeah, hi- Hiding Sad... Um, that one took a bit longer to write as a song. Uh, yeah, that, that's our most recent one we mm-hmm. we pulled out. Uh, and and that one was uh, the first uh, non-professionals track where, like, I would say Christian mainly wrote it on piano. Um, and, well, both of us sing, too, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. So mm. that, Luke's that, got a verse on that one. I do. Lukey spit some bars. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that one came together in a very different way. Um, and it's probably, I mean, it's our, my favorite thing we've done for sure. Because I, I sing, <laughs> obviously. I think that one is probably most different because that was very crafted in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, like he, like Luke mentioned, uh, Margo and Cece was very much, we jammed it so, so many times. We were just kind of ready to record it. Hiding said we didn't really know what we were getting into. We had the rhythm part down. We had the bass part down uh, and the drum part down, of course. Mm-hmm. And we just kind of threw it together as we went along with it. You know, uh, seeing what fit. We added like a... I, I describe it as a micro orchestra section because it's just me on a bunch of random instruments that I don't know how to play. <laughs> uh, and, and it creates this like anxious kind of build up in in the bridge that I'd say that whole experience separates it from from our other songs a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. For sure. we we knew the heart of the song was very like tense lyrically, and mm-hmm. that we were ready to try and make a song to match. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, speaking of crafting, if I'm not mistaken, the album art for Hiding Sad was also homemade am i am i not wrong in that or yeah luke created some beautiful art for that that Mm. was that was a very fun afternoon um that that like the corkboard sort of style for that uh we had the idea at some point uh and i just went to dollar tree and and just just dropped a, a lot um and it was pretty much just an afternoon of me putting that cork board together. And the funny thing about it is that, like, we shot it flat down. There's no way that thing could stand on a wall. Uh, so there's now also a video of me destroying the cork board after yeah. having used it for the art. So we, we've always been kind of, we like the DIY aesthetic and look. Right. And we often find that, like, going harder in that direction is a lot easier than trying too much to make something look really professional or something. Because when it comes out sort of it, it feels like it's trying to be this good rather than just like okay this is what we have let's make the best thing with it it's yeah. against the namesake you can't be too professional can't be too right. professional <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep it non-professional <laughs> so i know you said that you're working on an album and you know that you've kind of been recording and working with different singles throughout the you know the course of the past few years so you know when you put out a single you know is it kind of one of those things that you know you're usually trying to work to incorporate it into a larger project or you know do you ever have you know just kind of like songs misfit singles that you cook up that you're like oh maybe we'll use this for something and maybe we'll leave it you know sometimes it is the misfit singles that's i I wouldn't call these two songs like we planned them for an album Mm -hmm. that we just decided not to put it on Mm -hmm. margo and cc was initially going to be on album two but we decided it worked best as a single on its own. And then Hiding Sad was entirely, we, we made it to be a single. Um, we, we have our plan for album two pretty set in stone in, in terms of like s- track list and everything. Um, so it's, when the singles come about, they're kind of their own thing. Yeah, um, actually that works really well with like, for example, for album two, we have the whole set list and we're recording it pretty much track by track. Uh, but while that's happening, uh, Christian came to me just the other day and he was like, hey, I have this song. Um, it's about bikes. And then we ended up just for fun recording pretty much the whole song in one day. 
Um, and that's just going to be like a single we put out at some point before the album. You kind of get a feeling like when something doesn't quite fit into the canvas that is an album <laughs> mm. uh that we're kind of like oh let's try and find something different to do with this or like we think our audience really needs to hear this right now we're like hiding sad after we did our summer song we really wanted to show that we're kind of writing more a little bit introspective and darker too so hiding sad felt like the perfect next single to release and while we really liked it we also had some more piano songs on the album anyways so it, it really does kind of like you just kind of play it by ear and just keep writing just keep writing songs mm -hmm. <laughs> You've been talking about, you know, album two for a while now. Are there any hints as to when that might be released, or is that trade secret? I wouldn't say it's a secret. I would, say, well, if anything, it's a secret to us. We, we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of, we're kind of playing it by ear. We have, we have two songs that are a decent chunk recorded already, and I would say right now we're looking at a twelve-song track list. Mm -hmm. I think my personal goal is to have it all recorded by the end of the year. That doesn't mean it'll, like, release or anything because um, mixing time and stuff. But I, I want to have it at least tracked by the end of the year, I think. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully that would lead to a 2024 release. Right. Yeah. Uh, they really don't like you releasing music in winter for some reason. <laughs> so we, mm -hmm. we, we did uh, November with our first album. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll do a winter release thing. That, that could be fun if the album's ready in time. Uh, but it's just a matter of, like both having the album done and having all the promotional stuff we want to do with it ready. So it, it definitely is playing by ear, which is why we like putting out a bunch of singles in the meantime, because it's like, well, we still want to, we still want to interact with our fans and stuff. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think we're ready for your next song. If you are awesome. This next song is off of our first EP that we released. This song is called friendship breakup song. Guess what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> 